This is the historic Cherokee Trail. Cherokee and white emigrants together blazed the trail during the 1849 California Gold Rush. They traveled from Oklahoma into Kansas along the Santa Fe Trail to Bent's Fort in Colorado, where they followed a trapper's trail across Colorado's Front Range into Wyoming. There they joined the California Trail at Fort Bridger. These stories will give you a glimpse into emigrant life, their journeys, trials and tribulations, why they sought out a new life and new riches traveling through Colorado. Join us as you see history unfold. I am Sharon Danhauer, a volunteer with the Loveland Historical Society and a member of Oregon California Trail's Colorado Cherokee Trail chapter. This is the Cherokee Trail in north central Colorado, just three miles west of Loveland, near the historic Big Thompson River crossing of the Cherokee Trail and the Overland Stage Road. Mariano Medina, a Hispanic immigrant, proclaimed himself as the first whitey man on the creek when he settled on the Big Thompson River in 1858. Mariano was a mountain man, also a trapper, an army scout, a hunter, interpreter for the army, and an Indian fighter. And he was born in Taos, New Mexico in 1812. But that was when it was still New Spain. He became the first permanent settler in the valley, bringing his Indian wife, Takanesi, and their four children to settle at an old trapper's camp about a quarter mile north of today's location. Takanesi was a member of the Flathead tribe from the Northwest region, and she had been baptized as a Catholic. Hence her Christian name was Maria but Mariano, for some reason, called her John. Mariano can boast of many uh, firsts in this area, including the first business, the first settlement, permanent settlement, and the first school and first church. He operated a river ferry and charged travelers for safe passage across the then uncontrolled Big Thompson River. In a few years, over 100 people of Mexican, French, Indian, and white descent lived in cabins and teepees at his settlement, which spread across both sides of the river and both sides of the road. The settlement has had several names, but Namaqua is the name that has endured to today. Mariano chose to settle in this valley due to the discovery of gold in the Denver region in that same year, uh, which he knew would increase traffic on the Cherokee Trail. Cherokee Trail was the only north-south road between the Mississippi River, 850 miles to the east, and the California coast, 1,250 miles to the west. Mariano became a recognized pillar of the Loveland community and its history and his legacy as the first whitey man on the creek still resonates today. In 1862, the first Colorado territorial legislature granted authorization to Medina and Louis Papa, son of Takanesi, from her previous marriage to a French trapper uh, to construct a toll bridge. The bridge builders were not only responsible for the construction, but also for the maintenance of the bridge and the road approaches. Mariano and his settlers engaged in other profitable enterprises as well. They cut natural grass hay along the river and fattened worn out travelers uh, stock, w which they then sold for a profit in the next season. Mariano also operated a well-stocked mercantile to meet the needs of travelers and established a potato co-op with local growers who refused to sell to the Denver market until their fair market prices were met. Ben Holliday's Overland Mail and Stage Company designated Mariano's Crossing as a home station on the stage line. 
This is where passengers would stay overnight. Today we're standing a quarter mile south of the Big Thompson Crossing at Mariana Medina's Family Cemetery, which was established in 1864. A lady traveler once remarked that she was pleasantly surprised to find a well cared for cemetery out in the hinterland. Mariano had planted cottonwood saplings at the cemetery. He kept the weeds down and he kept the short stone wall surrounding his family's burials neatly whitewashed. The first burial at Mariano's family cemetery took place in 1864 and was that of a Mexican friend named Jose Rodriguez, who was killed during an Indian raid while tending to the horses. Over time, Mariano buried four of his own children and a baby of his stepson, Louis, his own wife, and eventually he was interred outside the rock wall on the south side as the area inside the wall was full. Later, Mariano's son from a second marriage was also buried outside the wall. The cemetery is one of the earliest Catholic cemeteries in Northern Colorado, although it came to be known as the Old Indian Graves, reflecting the common mistreatment of Indian burials in the early 20th century. After Louis Papa's death in 1936, the last of Mariano's family to care for the graves, the cemetery fell into neglect and disrepair. In January 1960, a neighborhood petition led to the closure by court order of the abandoned Mexican cemetery. The county coroner disinterred parcel remains from five of the eight burials, operating without knowledge of how many graves were there nor exactly where they were laid. Additionally, an unknown ninth grave was discovered containing the remains of a baby wrapped in a 1940s newspaper. Portions of each of the five disinterred graves were reburied the next day at a new city park located across the road from where Mariano's cabin once stood. The original coroner's report has never been found, although Harold Dunning, a local historian at the time, was able to read and transcribe it within a few days, a copy of which we do have. Most concerning is the fact that no one knew with any degree of certainty who was buried where and no markers were standing at the time the cemetery was officially closed. Likely, the Mariano Medina Family Cemetery, the only remaining piece of his settlement, would not be preserved and restored today if it were not for the indefatigable efforts of a local historian and the local Loveland Historical Society Board of Directors a member, whose name is Bill Myrath. In the summer of 2007, after several years of research on Mariano and his cemetery, Bill started his own awareness project for the mostly forgotten cemetery. The cemetery was placed on the local historic register in 2012. Octa's Colorado Cherokee Trail chapter installed a plaque in 2013 commemorating the Cherokee and Overland Trail that pioneers traversed alongside Medina Cemetery and throughout his settlement. Come and visit our part of the Cherokee Trail and then enjoy searching out more sections of this historically important Colorado Pioneer Trail to learn its interesting stories. Mm -hmm.